Hello, wonderful subscribers. You are welcome to our channel, Speak English with Eric. I know that it's been a very long time we came your way with a lesson, but today the proverbial old man has moved her walking stick from the way. And so today there's the opportunity for us to have our beautiful lessons again. So um, one of the frequent questions that I get asked a lot from subscribers and other followers is, some english equivalents of some local items that we use uh, and so someone will ask you what is the english name for this what is the english name for that sometimes i ask myself okay uh, should we have the english equivalents of all the local items or words that we use in ghana or in your home country or i think about it a lot and i would say that the answer is no because there is no one-to-one -one correspondence between different languages. And so there are not exact equivalents of most of the words in one language in another language because no two languages are the same. Every language is distinct and sovereign and complete on its own. And so we don't necessarily have to have the direct equivalence of one language in another language language and so yeah that is what i often say but i always have this caveat that um, in situations where there are local equivalents in english then it is important that as you are using the english language you use those words to expand your vocabulary and then also for communicative intelligibility if you are communicating with people who do not understand your localized English, um, it is important to use what is internationally acknowledged or recognized so that people would understand you when you speak. The end goal of all communication is to um, for you to transmit some kind of information to the person you are talking with and for the person to understand you. And so um, in the local context, we use so many words that we understand locally. But when it comes to um, international space or communicating with people from different spaces, we need to give additional context to some of these words that we use. For example, in Ghana, we can just say, he's good, brutal. He's, the match was brutal. Like, brutal in standard English means something bad, right? evil and callous right but in that localized context it means excellent and so it's actually a degree marker so there are some words that we use that may not be the exact uh, meaning when it comes to standard english but these are localized and well understood so today we want to talk about some words in our local languages uh, that have English equivalent and uh, I'll be talking much about words in tree because that's the language I speak and um, I do not have that repertoire in other Ghanaian languages so pardon me if I don't give an equivalent in your local language right I'll be just opposing uh, English language and tree Asante tree or in some cases infante or any of the akan languages so uh stick and stay with us um i know you are in a hurry to just savor all the beautiful things that i have planned in store for this particular lesson so let's get right into this so the first word that we want to look at is the word which we've corrupted as sudi sudi i know you remember ever saying Sudi, right? Um, the actual word is Sudan Dai. Sudan Dai. So let me read this. So Sudan Dai is a synthetic chemical dye generally applied for coloring substances such as hydrocarbon solvent, palm oils, fats, waxes, and plastics. Sudan dyes are widely used in commercial manufacturing to impact a rich red red orange or yellow red color to plastics and textiles so the word that we've corrupted as sudi sudi is actually sudan dye sudan dye 
Our second word is Kalos, spelled C A L L U S, Kalos. So when you read a lot or you pound fufu a lot, you realize that there is this thickened or hardened part of your palm. So those hardened parts is called callus, right? So if there are many, you can say calluses. So there are a lot of calluses in his palm because he's pounded fufu for a very long time. So it's callus, right? Okay. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please, I would like you to subscribe to our channel, Speak English with Eric, and click on the bell notification icon so that anytime we upload a video lesson, you'll be notified. So the third so, word that we want to look at is cauldron. Cauldron, as displayed in the picture. And so it's a large metallic pot f used for cooking. So in the local language, we call it dadesen. That is in Asante Kri, we call it dadesen. It is a large metallic cooking pot. But instead of using a large metallic cooking pot, you can just be concise to say cauldron. Cauldron. And then those metal sticks that we used to um, hold the, the metallic pot firmly so that it doesn't shift or move or fall away from the, the uh, cooking pot or whatever is also called clumps. Or metallic clumps right so oftentimes in those days you step your uh, two legs on them to hold the the cooking pot firmly so that when you're driving the banku or the omutu or whatever that you are preparing it's able to hold the cauldron um, well okay so that is also called clumps the fourth word that we want to look at is Aridan fruit, Aridan fruit. So the local version is prekese. I know prekese is not new to any of us because it is one of the um, uh, most nutritious fruits that we use in preparing our food, and it has it gives this heavenly aroma that um, is is good for your health. It's medicinal. It's good for other purposes so it's called aridan fruit or precase aridan fruit or precase another common word that we often try to find the english equivalent for is coin susara coin susara so it's called techy berries techy berries so it also has this nutritional and medicinal value it can be used to prepare food it can also be used to prepare medication and so it's techie berries or coin susara techie berries or coin susara another item that is often used in many Ghanaian delicacies is insisawa yeah it is sweet it is so good it's so <laughs> i know now you are salivating it's anchovies anchovies in sisawa there are a lot of species of this uh in sisawa but all of them are small very small 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 tiny um, fishes or fish that you find in most um seas especially in ghana it, it's used to prepare delicious meals and it's called anchovies in sisawa anchovies so the next word that we want to look at is earthenware bowl or pot earthenware bowl or pot in the local language we call it apotoywa or ajoa others also call it asanka right so it's this handmade clay bowl or pot that we use as ordinary bowl that we feed in right so oftentimes we grind um pepper tomatoes or any other um, vegetables in so it's called earthenware bowl or earthenware pot so once we know the earthenware bowl or the apotoywa we know that it comes with this masher or grinder we call it eta so that is what we use to mash the uh, pepper or tomatoes or any kind of vegetable in the earthenware bowl so it's also called grinder or masher right some people 
prefer to call it um, African blender, but um, well, that's what they choose to call it. But you can just say uh, masher or grinder or wooden masher, any of them works, right? So that is a tag. So the next item that we want to talk about is locust beans or African locust beans. So as you can see in the picture, in the local dialects or in the local language, we call it dawa dawa. And it is not tree, I think it is hausa, right? So it's popularly known in Ghana as dawa dawa. And those who are aficionados of this uh, delicacy will tell you how sweet it is when it is used to prepare all sort of delicacies, especially uh, the, the stew for dievo and, and all those things. You see what I mean? Right. So it's called locust beans or African locust beans. Dawa dawa. So the tenth item that we want to look at is taro leaves. Taro leaves. So as you can see in the image, taro leaves. So it's called contumbre in the local language. Contumbre. Taro leaves. Contumbre. So if you've been looking for this word all your life, there you have it. It's taro leaves. Contumbre. So the next item is aglet. Aglet. So this is a metallic or plastic tube th that is fastened at the end of a shoelace, right? T to keep it all together, right? So it's called aglet. Aglet. So it's a metallic or plastic tube that is fastened to uh, the end or the tip of a shoelace. It's called aglet. Aglet. You would realize that when it rains, after a very long time of dry weather, warmth, no rain, that smell that comes, right? It, it comes from the earth, uh, more like the dusty path. That nice smell, it is called petrichor. Petrico. It smells really good after a long time of no rain, a long time of dry weather. When it rains, that kind of smell that emanates from the the earth or the soil or the ground is called petrico. Petrico. The next item that we want to talk about is a spatula or a wooden spatula. So in Cree we call it bankuta. That that wooden stick that we used to more like drive banku or a moto or any other meal right so it's called wooden spatula or spatula right so now you can use it in your vocabulary too. oftentimes you find people who walk barefooted they never wear any shoes or sandals or any kind of footwear so wherever they go they prefer to walk barefooted. They are called Nelly Port. Nelly Port. Do you know anyone who is a Nelly Port? There are some priests, some people who prefer not to wear any shoes at all. So you could call them Nelly Port. So someone who is too knowing often claims that they, they know too much. They are prescient. They know more than anybody else. And they try to rub it in the face in a very annoying manner so such people are called mini mini in chi or she she right um so it's too knowing not too known too known means the person is popular or the person is famous right but in this context we actually mean that the person behaves as if they know everything right so it's too knowing mini mini she she so one of the words that I often find people asking me the English equivalent about is ahonsheshe. Obia oye ahonsheshe. Right. So um, someone who tries to gain favor from people and so they try to uh, do a lot of things just to gain favor from somebody or tries to rob around other people to gain some favor sort of from the person or other people who are related to this person you could say the action is to ingratiate 
to ingratiate. So he was ingratiating with the president or he was ingratiating with the manager to gain this contract or that contract. So that kind of action is called to ingratiate. Ingratiate. He was ingratiating with this person. Word number 17. So if a child behaves like an older person or because of how the person talks or behaves it looks like the person is older than their age so in p we say oh, I am paying some in paying some so in paying some is precocious precocious so she's a precocious child she behaves like an adult she talks like an adult so you could say that the child is precocious precocious if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe it is speak english with eric here we give you nothing but the best comprehensive english language lessons that would help you improve upon your vocabulary your english usage and then make you be able to begin well when the language of communication is the english language the next word that we want to look at is nutmeg so in preparing food a nutmeg is a kind of spice or item that we use to prepare food but in a context that today we want to look at it it's something in football right so if you pass a ball through the legs of an opponent that skill we often call it sulia in the local language so sulia is nutmeg nutmeg so neymar uh, messi ronaldo they are fond of giving other players nutmegs right so if you pass a ball in between the legs of an opponent it's nutmeg so the next word that we want to look at is skin pain skin pain if you search skin pain on the internet or in any kind of dictionary authoritative dictionary the meaning that you would have is something associated with injury to the body so pain to the body right so it doesn't necessarily carry the localized meaning that we we often have in mind when we use it in ghana as someone who is jealous or envious of other people so you would say that skin pain is ghanaian english or it's part of Ghanaianisms, right? We use and understand it in Ghana, but in the international usage, you need to give additional context to what you actually mean. And so it could be um, jealousy or um, envy, right? Sometimes it gets to the level of hatred, but hatred might be a very uh, strong word in that context. But generally, skin pain is jealousy or envy. The last word that we want to look at is feisty. Feisty. So someone who is co courageous, bold, ag aggressive in a kind of way that the person wouldn't be trumped over or they wouldn't let anyone just trump over them. Right. So such people are feisty. Um, in the local language, we would say near ding. Right. Sometimes uh, they are not just uh, a pushover or a walkover so in terms of even how the person talks makes argument the person is feisty in a way that the person is not just a pushover right so it's feisty and near ding okay so uh, this is the end of our discussion today i hope you picked one or two words from it that you'll be using today um as i said from the beginning uh, not all local words should have english equivalent because no two languages are the same no language is an extension of another language each language is complete in itself and so you definitely have different structures different vocabulary different um, diction for expressing different things and so it is not uh, mandatory to always have the English equivalent of a local word but in cases where we do have those English equivalent then it is important to use them if you are using the English language for um, for communicative inter intelligibility for people to understand you when you communicate with them especially if they don't belong to your 
local area. So thank you. Uh, I would like you to subscribe to our channel, Speak English with Eric. You come, you come your way with other wonderful lessons. So subscribe to our channel so that you'll be notified anytime we have a lesson. Until we meet again, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.